Welcome oil painting beginners! In the first video, I talked about which supplies we need and in this video, we will have a little practice. We will start from small. The reason we are starting from small, from the basics, is just because we want to get to know the paint, the medium, how quickly does it dry. Before we paint this avocado, I will talk about what lean and fat means and why it matters in oil painting. Before we start painting, we have to prepare. So I'm going to pour my mineral spritz in this jar, a mason jar, and I'm going to close the lid because it is toxic. I'm going to make sure I'm working in a safe environment. I also want air ventilation going, so I'm going to open all my windows, although it's pretty loud outside today. Done! Then we can start. I have my palette on the left, which is disposable, and my canvas paper on the right. I'm going to apply just a little bit of my paint because I don't know how much I need. I have no idea about oil painting. And I'm going to show you first what is lean and what is fat. Probably you heard fat over lean a lot before, and I want to explain what fat over lean means. But in order to explain that, I have to show you first what is lean, what is fat. So first, this is my paint without any medium in it. It is hard to apply, it is very dark, it's very dense, and it's quite opaque. It doesn't have much gloss at all. And this is my thinner, and with my mineral spirits, I said thinner, but it's mineral spirits, I just dipped my brush into this mineral spirits, and it immediately made my paint more flowy. When I applied it on the paper, I saw that it diluted its consistency, so it's much more transparent, the color is much more different, it's not glossy at all. This is my linseed oil. It's going to slow down the drying time, I know that. I'm gonna apply just a little bit, but of course, I am pretty bad at this, so <laughs> it was too much oil. Anyway, it's supposed to be 20% oil and 80% paint most of the time. What I observed after I poured this oil was it got really softer, viscous, and shiny. Look at that, it's so easy to apply. It is so much more fun than the other two, and it's pretty glossy too. And this is my Walnut Alkit Medium, which is another oil, but it dries faster, and it's Walnut this time, not linseed oil. I just wanted to try this one as well so that you see if there are any differences. Well, when I applied it on the paper, it almost felt like the same with linseed oil. It's the same consistency, same glossiness, and same color, but it's going to dry faster than the linseed oil in this case. So look at this one, the one with the mineral spirits, it's already dry and it's pretty lean this is the leanest and then i have the paint without any medium in it which is the second leanest here but the ones with the oil they are fat and you can see the gloss here and you can see from this angle how much they shine what happens if we add white on them i just wanted to try this one first because it looks really dry to me and there was no problem but when i applied white on the first one I saw that there was some brown coming up because I know that it wasn't completely dry yet. What happens if we apply this same white on the fat layers? Because the paint is not dry yet, it's going to mix with my white color. You see that you can actually mix your paint on the canvas, but a lot of artists don't recommend this. Mixing your color on your palette is the best option here, because seeing your color mixture on palette is much healthier. Don't forget to have a piece of cloth to clean your brush, and if I were you, I would use white cloth, because these chemicals can pick up the color from the cloth. So what is fat over lean? Why do we have to always put the fat layers on lean layers? I'm going to explain this to you in some simple ways and with a very very interesting example. Okay, the example I am about to give might sound really crazy, but I went to school for earth sciences. So this was the first example that came to my mind. As you know, we have the thin continental crust, the way we know is the earth, and underneath that layer we have magma, which is fluid. And because it's not dry, it keeps moving. So what happens if magma keeps moving, but the top layer is not? because it's completely dry, it starts cracking, and we call them folds. 
Just like that guys, if you don't want to create minor or major faults on your painting, meaning if you don't want to crack your paint, then you have to do fat over lean. Let me explain one more time with this. Let's say this is your painting on the first layer, you have the oily fat layer and on the top you have the lean layer, then you will have cracks. In order to not to have cracks, this is my formula. From bottom to top, it goes from the one that dries the quickest to slowest. And at the bottom, I have my canvas and the first layer could be your paint and the mineral spritz. Over that, you can apply some paint without nothing. On top of that, you can add some paint and alkyd medium. And at the very top, you can add some linseed oil to your paint, which might slow down the drying time. So there are multiple possibilities. After I taught this to myself, I can now start painting. I started with the lightest color here and I added white. And of course, what I learned about oil painting is because it's not dry yet, it's just going to mix with the lower layer and give you some color that you didn't have on your palette in the first place. Another thing I realized about oil painting is that you can apply a lighter color on a darker color without any problems because they are very opaque. And also this slow drying time gives you a great opportunity to fix your mistakes or to add more layers if you want to or correct any other spots that you feel like correcting. Another thing I realized is how much paint should you take on your brush. This is too much, for example. If you take this much paint on your brush, then it might overflow. And if you have other colors already on your brush, they might create this weird color mixture. So the best amount is this one right now, what I'm doing on my palette. And how are you going to know that if you didn't get enough paint on your brush is this. If you apply your paint on your paper and it leaves an impression like this, this means you don't have enough paint. The only paint I'm familiar with is the watercolor. Oil paint is different in that sense that it doesn't dissolve into the other color. They don't mix that way, just like in wet in wet in watercolor. Instead, you are making layers with different colors on top of each other. So this was a little bit of challenge for me and it's new for me. So we will see how I'm going to handle it. It's almost like more like a gouache paint because it's really, really opaque and it's not going to mix with the neighbor colors. I made my black by mixing brown and ultramarine and now I'm adding more green to that. So I created my own dark gray. As you can see here, the brush size matters. If you're giving tiny details, then using a smaller brush is much better. In this sense, I think it was very similar to watercolor. What I realized with oil painting is that I was not afraid of making mistakes because I had the feeling that I could correct it anytime I wanted to especially applying this lighter colors on the darker ones freely. I had a little bit of overflow right there on the right and I'm going to fix it now with an even lighter color. Here we go. That's a lot of paint on my brush anyway, whatever. Okay, see, you can fix them very easily. So. This is why I really liked oil painting. Oil painting has a smell, but it's not really intense. It doesn't really bother me. I almost actually enjoy it. And I have asthma, so I was a little bit worried beforehand if it's going to affect me negatively or not, but it did not. If you're a clumsy artist like me, then you might have a problem with oil painting. You saw that I just dropped green paint in the middle of my paper, and I don't know how I'm going to fix that, but hey, we will figure it out. If you stain your clothing with oil paint, it's not gonna go away. So you have to be really careful. Or once you make a mistake, you have to make sure that you can paint it over with another color. Another thing about my clumsiness is that I sometimes forgot to close the lid for my mineral spritz, which you should not because it's really, really toxic, guys. And you have to work very clean. You have to clean your brushes. You have to make sure your working area stays clean even after you finish. So yeah, it's a lot of work. But hey, I think for my very first oil painting, this turned out not bad. 
Let me show you how I cleaned my working space. So this is my palette. As I said, it's disposable. I didn't have any paint left over on those. Otherwise, I would have put them in little jars. Here, this is my mineral spirits. I'm just going to apply it on my paper towel just a little bit and after that I'm going to wash here with this soap and water and as a final step wipe everywhere with my dry towel. When it comes to the brushes I'm going to add some mineral spirits here. I dip my brushes in there and rub them on a piece of clean paper towel and I'm going to repeat the process until I get a clean brush. After I clean my brushes like that, the second step is to clean them with a dish soap and water. So here I'm going to add just a little bit of dish soap on my fingers and I'm going to wash my brush gently. I'm going to make sure that all the paint, especially at the bottom of my brush, is gone. And once I'm done with them, I'm going to put them back in water. So after I finish washing them, I'm going to put them in a dry towel, paper towel again. And by pressing them gently with this paper towel, I'm going to let them dry. If you missed the first part of this series, it's right here. Great way to learn which supplies I chose and why.